Tuesday Weld might be the ultimate example of a former child actor who endured great hardship through her five-decade spanning career. Weld's penchant for scandal and controversy often made the people around her uncomfortable, but she still managed to become a full-fledged star. After progressing to more mature roles in the late 50s, Weld won a Golden Globe for Most Promising Female Newcomer in 1960. And throughout the following decade, she established herself in Tinseltown by playing dramatic roles in a handful of major motion pictures. At the end of the day, Tuesday had a lot of pressure put on her shoulders from a very young age. She likewise received very little assistance navigating her way through stardom. That being said, she's still considered one of the most iconic stars of the silver screen of her day. Keep watching to learn more about her wild life story and how she managed to find success despite being dealt a very difficult hand. Facts First presents Tuesday Weld Never Wore Underwear. See her photos. She never had it easy. Susan Kerr Weld, better known by her stage name Tuesday Weld, was born August 27, 1943, in Manhattan. Despite her family's name being associated with wealth, Weld's upbringing was anything but privileged. Her father ultimately did not inherit the family's fortune, and so the family's financial situation was often uncertain and precarious. Weld's father, Lathrop Motley Weld, was considered the outcast of the family due to addiction and a scandalous romantic history. Her mother was his fourth wife, which added to the family's sense of instability. At age four, Susan Weld faced her first major crisis when her father passed away suddenly, leaving the family in dire financial straits. Weld's mother, Yosine Balfour Kerr, was left to raise three children with no source of income. In a time of great need, she hoped and prayed for a guardian angel to help her family survive. Despite their best efforts, Weld's mother and siblings were struggling to make ends meet in a shabby and cramped apartment in a rundown Manhattan slum. Recognizing their desperate situation, Wells father's wealthy family, who resided in the affluent community of Tuxedo Park, extended a helping hand. They offered a home and education for the children. But there was one catch that made it seem especially cruel. The Weld family offered to rescue Tuesday and her siblings, but with one condition. The children were never to see their mother again. This demand was rooted in their belief that Yosine came from a less than desirable background. Although her father was an accomplished Canadian-American illustrator who had his drawings published in Life magazine, she was in fact an orphan. The Welds held this against her and assumed she was from a poor family, which they believed was reason enough to keep her away from her own children. Yosine naturally was not willing to give up her children, and so she boldly declined the Welds' twisted offer. But this left her alone and without any means to support her family. It was at this point she noticed something special about her daughter Susan. Susan was stunningly beautiful, and Yosine had an idea that could solve their financial woes. From Modeling to Hollywood Yosin tried to find modeling work for her daughter to make money to feed the family. This put tremendous pressure on young Weld. By the age of nine, Weld had a nervous breakdown. At ten, she learned she could ease her sorrows and drown them at the bottom of a bottle. This led to her quickly developing a significant problem with alcohol. Yosin moved the family to Fort Lauderdale so Weld could attend school, but her addiction to alcohol continued. At age 12, Weld got her first acting role in a TV series and then a small bit part in Alfred Hitchcock's The Wrong Man. She had her first affair at a young age. Early on in her acting career, Weld added pills on top of her booze addiction. According to Weld, she had her first affair when she was only 11 years old, and at 12, she attempted suicide because she had fallen in love with a gay man who was unable to reciprocate her feelings. This led to her being hospitalized and falling into a coma, temporarily losing her hearing and vision. Despite her desperate pleas for psychological help, her mother refused to provide it and continued to push her daughter into the limelight. She never seemed to want stardom. While modeling in L.A., both Tuesday's mom and the people around her began to market her in very cringeworthy, if not potentially illegal, ways. After a few years, 20th Century Fox started promoting Weld, who was only 14 at the time, as the next Marilyn Monroe. 
The studio's publicity department even made up disturbing quotes such as, I never wear underwear, it's much warmer with nothing on. And Weld's own mother described her as a tawny blonde all over, in one particularly alarming newspaper interview. Weld's career gained a great deal of momentum with her appearance in the 1956 film Rock, 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 and she was introduced to a much wider TV audience in 1959's The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. She had a girl-next-door charm, with a hint of danger making her the perfect candidate for teenage fantasy. At the peak of her early fame, likely every young male in America had a crush on her. Her off-screen behavior added to that. She was a tabloid magnet who constantly raised eyebrows and roused suspicions. She was known for her outrageous statements like, quote, The man I marry will have to be richer than I am. And her mother once famously quipped that she didn't allow her out until after 11 p.m. because that's when she started her night. There were also pervasive rumors of affairs with men three times her age, and in interviews, she constantly hinted at addiction, sexual activity, and family discord. She turned down several significant roles. Wells' career took an unusual turn as she turned down major movie roles like True Grit, Lolita, and Rosemary's Baby, opting instead to do B-movies that bordered on Grindhouse. In an interview with the New York Times, Weld explained it was never her intention to chase success, and she knowingly refused those roles. Weld's reasoning for turning down successful films is unclear, but some speculate that after being pushed for so long without receiving enough gratitude, she simply didn't want the pressure and stress of success. During the 70s, Weld started to move away from big screen roles after many of her films failed to make an impact on the audience or critics. Tuesday's wild persona was on full display in 1971 when she threw her shoe at a critic who criticized her performance in A Safe Place at the New York Film Festival. She received an Academy Award nomination for her role as Diane Keaton's troubled sister in Looking for Mr. Goodbar, but by then she had already grown very disillusioned with Hollywood. Over the course of her life, she was married three times, to screenwriter Claude Haas, musician Pincus Zuckerman, and to Dudley Moore. But she found some reward in her later work, with rare appearances in films like the 1984 Mafia series Once Upon a Time in America and 1993's Falling Down. Even though she retreated from the limelight and made a life in the mountains of Colorado, she's remained charmingly irreverent. When asked what drove her to isolate in the 1970s, she once quipped, I think it was a Buick. In 2018, it was noted that Weld bought a home in the Hollywood Hills for $1.8 million. In 2011, she was celebrated by the Film Society of Lincoln Center, who held a week-long event featuring her works and praised her as a star with underrated subtlety, tremendous life force, and cream-fresh beauty. And while she hasn't appeared on screen in over 20 years, she seems to be doing quite well, all things considered. Tuesday Weld's story can be seen as a cautionary tale in several ways. Her wild behavior as a young actress, which included drug addiction, sexual activity, and family unrest, serves as a warning about the dangers of fame and the temptations that can come from it. Her rejection of major roles in favor of B-movies that did not propel her career to greater heights also highlights the importance of making wise career choices. And her self-imposed isolation in the mountains of Colorado can be seen as a cautionary tale about the negative impact that Hollywood and the entertainment industry can have on a person's mental and emotional well-being. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Tuesday Weld had her first affair when she was 11 and she attempted to take her own life at age 12? Let us know in the comments section below.